bigger profits in your small business, like many of us, I'm sure you're feeling it. Business is hard. Now more than ever, you need a plan to help your business not just survive, but thrive. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a profit and business strategist on a mission, and I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees sustainable profitability, yet guides your growth. I want to share some strategies that I've earned and learned on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. So I'm really excited to have my international guest, Trav Bell, on today. Trav is the bucket list guy, uh, the world's number one bucket list expert. As a self-employed bucket listo listologist, Trav has helped uh, people live their bucket list before it's too late. His unique life engagement message really wakes you up, stops Groundhog Day, and helps you experience more fulfillment. He says a bucket list is a tangible life plan, that's what we're talking about, where our business plan and career plan should fit into our life plan and not be the other way around. No one practices what they preach more than Trav. His crazy globetrotting adventures are contagious, hilarious, and always fresh, like his shirt, right? Uh, he is the author of the best-selling book, My Bucket List Blueprint, and a TEDx thought leader, a certified speaking professional, and he's also the founder and CEO of the Bucket List Coaches, who are now on a mission to help 10 million bucket listers. And his hashtag is ticket before you uh, kick it. Before Trav became the bucket list guy, he founded and franchised a chain of professional training studios across Australia. Hence, you're going to dig his accent. Starting with one client, he and his team went on to help over 2 million personal training sessions and motivated tens of thousands of clients. This is why Trav now regard, is regarded as one of the world's most in-demand motivational speakers. Wow, so exciting. Trav, welcome to Profit With A Plan podcast. Wow, so stoked to be here, Marcia. That introduction, it's its nearly like I wrote it. I mean, and, and then just sent it out. You know, like, who, who would have how, did you, how, did, how did you come up with that? That was absolutely amazing. It was, it was. It lifted you right up into the superstar, uh, rock star status, right? I know, I know. And, and yeah, I, I've got to kind of get up to that now. Um, right? I've set, set the big right? bar. <laughs> I love it. We'll see how so, we go. Trav, we are, we, I'm fabulous. This is so exciting to have you on. I caught you on another podcast and I listened to the entire thing watching going, yeah, I need my listeners to hear your story about awesome. the bucket list. So awesome. do tell, awesome. where did you start this crazy idea? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually someone called me the bucket list guy about 10 years ago. So I, but, you know, just as as you said in the in the introduction there, I'm glad you read that out, so I don't have to repeat it. Uh, that, um, is the fact that I, I spent 20 years in the personal fitness training industry. So um, sort of growing up as a jock, always been a swimmer, surfer, surf lifesaver or lifeguard. And, you know, went into university, did a human movement, phys ed degree, um, and then started personal training back in the early 90s. And I was one of the first personal trainers kind of running around Melbourne here in Australia. And uh, I founded and franchised the chain of personal training studios, basically because and your, your entrepreneur audience will love this, because someone, because someone said, you can't franchise that. I've just read Michael Gerber's freaking e-myth, which destroyed me, it was the worst book to read at the start of my business, <laughs> the of start course. of my because I got this idea of leverage and scalability like straight away. And so I got the idea, someone sort of dared me, I guess, um, or said, you can't do it. So that immediately said, well, I'll show you. So right. I, I found and franchised a chain of personal training studios, helped you know, tens of tens of thousands of uh, clients across Australia, two million plus personal training sessions. Always loved helping people, but I went through a bout of depression. Things started to get on top of me. Um, I, you know, relationship, business, some legal things, blah, 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 blah. We've all had one of these, I'm sure, if not many, breakdown before breakthrough. Yeah. You know, moments, confusion before yeah. clarity. And that's kind of why, why we end up as coaches, right? <laughs> we want to help <laughs> other, pe other people. We're always, we're always coaching. We're always coaching our former self in some form or another. 
So I, instead of going on like heavy antidepressants, which as you know, is more of a band-aid effect, um, I, I decided, no, I'm not going to go down that route and sort of sleepwalk through my life. I wanted to get to the core psychology of what I was going through. So I found myself in personal development courses and learning positive psychology and NLP. And if you ran a course then Marcia, I would have bought it and run to the back of the room and bought, you know, bought the upgrade. Um, so, you know, always because I believed in coaching, I believed in getting mentors, I believed getting around smart people that had the answers that I didn't. So I, uh, and it was in one of these um, personal development seminars where a friend of mine at the time said, why don't you teach this stuff? You know, he actually said, why don't you teach this shit? <laughs> and, and then, I, uh, and then I, I went, it actually helped me compartmentalize what I was going through at the time. And I was like, it sort of justified all the money I'd spent too and the weekends and the fire walking and everything else that you do. And then I, um, I put on a talk and I, I nearly had to pay the 40 people to turn up to that talk and I packaged <laughs> in all the stuff that I'd learned. And for me, doing, putting on a seminar and, and publicly speaking, you know, kind of like this for the first time was that at the time on reflection, it was the big domino that I had to push over for myself in my life at that point in time, which affected a lot of other, uh, you know, things in my life. So I put on a talk and about halfway through that talk, I, I actually started sharing something that a lot of people did not know about me. And the fact that I'd had a, this was 10 years ago, that since I was 18, which was quite a few years <laughs> earlier than 10 years ago, that I had a list to do before I die, always written down. I don't picked it up in a Tony Robbins book or something like that early mm -hmm. on. So it always had this written down list to do before I die. And I, and I, and I said to the group, Hey, who else has got one of these lists? Look, let's share. And I realized really quickly, I was the only freak in the room. I'm like, well, no. why, why, why? So you don't write down, oh, no, we barely write down our goals. And you ask most people what their goals are. It's pay off the house, put the kids through school, do a bit of trouble when I'm older and probably mm -hmm. sicker. Right. And I'm like, and I'm like, um, well, all right, well, this is what I've got on my list. And it really inspired people um, to not just write stuff down, but to go after their list to do before I die. And for me, it's always been my true north, you know, on mm. my compass. It's where I, I um, what I recalibrated on. And it's always got me off the fence in terms of making decisions in my business. It, it's, it's hurried me up to build my mm -hmm. business because, you know, as you know, a business is, it should produce two things and two things only, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the, the cash flow as well as the time flow for us business owners to go and do our bucket list, right? Double right. bonus though, if you actually, double bonus, if you actually love what you do and it's hitting your values, if you love what you do and it's hitting your values, which is your internal rule book and you're congruent with that on a day-to-day -day basis, I think that's the holy grail, right? A lot uh, of people totally. can't say that. Yeah. So if you if you've created a business and you don't like really what you do, then it's time to re, you know, take take stock. But I started sharing my list to do before I die, and it really inspired people. And Joe, one of the participants in that first seminar, said, How's the list list to do before you die stuff? It's it's like a bucket list. You're you're like the bucket list guy. And then uh -huh. it was like Bang, light bulb moment, <laughs> light bulb moment, went home and registered the bucketlessguy.com. And, and I've been doing that for 10 years ever since, primarily running around the world as a speaker because I love, I love the fact that I get to run around. People pay me to run around the world to speak at their conferences and I can go and rock up, do a keynote talk, get paid handsomely and then spend the rest of the month <laughs> you know, doing bucket list stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the kind of... That's the kind of, as a thought leader, I guess, that's the highway and the lane that I've chosen um, in all the other different things that I could have done. So, um, you know, I, I, I've, I've sort of been on that lane and I guess own that lane for the last 10 years this, and, and running this bucket list brand or this bucket list filter over, over everything that I do since. And, and what is so important about this is that the biggest challenge that my business owners in my consulting world have is that they joined their business or created their business to have this life 
Mm. But yet now they have a J-O-B and they're working 60 or what I like to say, they, they get the luxury to choose which 100 hours a week they want to work. And they've mm. given up on all their dreams because they have to work harder and go chase after more clients and all this crazy mm. stuff because that's mm. what they're, they're, they're forcing their business along rather than doing the stuff that they want. And they forget about that bucket list that was the whole reason they got into this business for well so one of my one of my early mentors and you would have said it a billion times to your clients as well is uh you know uh, uh, he's now also my business partner brad sugars and he uh, he runs action coach globally um and he one of his one of his um you know his his famous definition of a business is a, it's a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you a business is a yeah. commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. So I've always seen businesses that, right? Mm. So I could go like, like I, do, I actually don't get it. Like if you buy a mowing franchise, right? You're the, still the one cutting the lawn. I don't, <laughs> that's not a business. That's a job. A business by that definition. Yeah, that's your job. It's like, just go work for someone else and, uh-huh. and, and knock off at five o'clock and not have any worries if you're going to trade time for money like that. Mm-hmm. So, so I've always had this franchising, licensing, uh, leverage, scaling kind of mindset, and that's 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 what this is too. And it's you know we've now got certified bucket list coaches in 22 countries. I'm looking at a world map um, in 22 countries around the world, and purely because hey, look, yeah, I'm the bucket list guy, and that's all well and good. But, um, you know, I can only help so many people in my lifetime, you know, and I, I love it. I don't get me wrong, but I'm, 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 it's not congruent with me to only help a handful of people or a couple of handfuls of people, even though I'm doing it one to many via the stage or one to many via a book or one to many via a TED talk or whatever. But I'll, I want to help like really change the narrative, change the conversation and get these personal development sort of tools, these positive psychology strategies out into the world. Because at the end of the day, it, it, what a lot of people don't know is that un, the, uh, what underpins these whole bucket list, um, you know, the stuff that I talk about, is it's all positive psychology. And positive psychology is the science or is the psychology of happiness how to help people mm. have more meaning, purpose, and fulfillment in their life and have more gratitude yeah. in their life. And so right now, we are so focused on the mental health of the planet right now as a collective tribe. Um, it's not about just ticking cool stuff off and look at me, I'm climbing a mountain, I'm finishing a marathon, and that's all well and good. But, but it's really about how a, a person identifies the things that bring them meaning, purpose, and fulfillment in their life. And we just put, it, put this brand, this bucket list brand over the top of it to make it more tangible to more people. Right. And without that, what are you doing all the work for? Right. You're, you're, you're slaving away every day trying to make a business so your kids can go to a nice school. You can drive a nice car and wear a nice watch, you know, which is BS yeah. in my mind. It's the experiences in life that we remember most. The business is yeah. the tool that allows us the quote freedom. It's a vehicle. It's to a vehicle. go do it. It's the vehicle. Yeah, so, I think, I think just, nothing, yeah. there's nothing more depressing than an entrepreneur, let alone an employee, but an entrepreneur who builds a business, um, gets themselves really busy, and then later on in life goes to try and sell the business and it's not saleable <laughs> mm-hmm. and they can't leverage or their kids don't want it or they don't want to take over. And then they have five, 10 good years after they've officially retired and then they're gone. And the money's gone. That whole retirement that they put their like, blood, sweat, and tears into is gone. Yep. And it's, that it's, it's a horrible, me. yep, it's a horrible shame. So, yeah. So, one of the things that, that I admire most about you is that franchise mentality. Um, you've come in and you've said, I've got this great idea, and I'm creating mini me's to go out and do the same thing to serve oh god more no people. no i'm not doing mini me's that's that i wouldn't wish that on the world <laughs> there's, one, there's one there's one too many of me uh, <laughs> no but you're right it's a framework i haven't deliberately i haven't called it trav bell's coaching you know like like 
I'll give you an example. John Maxwell. You can't sell that. You can't sell that. No, you can't. No, you can't. And that's why, you know, like with respect, you know, Tony Robbins results coaches, you know, da, 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 da. and it's like, how about removing the ego of the name? Cause the name is not everywhere and, and go with a brand that people can, it can stand on its own. And it was the best, best decision ever, but I had to get it validated. Right. So I, you know, it wasn't until I actually did a, uh, a keynote, a keynote for um, a big business coaching franchise, and, and and was the founder of that. I did a talk in South Africa, and it was the, the founder of that, um, Brad, and he said, "I I think this is licensable. You know, have you thought about allowing other people to teach you stuff?" Um, and I automatically, like a lot of business owners, go, "No, no, this is what makes me it's special. My, this is yeah, my baby. This is me. You know, like." And that whole identity thing and and scarcity thinking um and and at the around the same time i had a lot of people actually just ripping my stuff off and then using it and then even what's weirder than tagging me on facebook or instagram oh. you know like going oh look i'm using your stuff i was like i should be getting paid for this you know and and uh and then people requesting trav can i teach your stuff so it was this kind of perfect storm that led me, and it was also, it was also, you know, like I was on stage and talking about bucket list, and there's a piece in there that I talk about leaving a legacy, and I really didn't have one, mm. um, and getting a little bit grayer, and you know, having now I've got four four kids in my life, and I I'm just like, all right, well maybe it's time to really look at leveraging and scaling this thing into a bigger thing just beyond yourself. And so I went from kind of a scarcity thinking to more of an abundant, you know, abundant uh, thinking and, and then just went for it, and, you know, set up the structure, got the legals, got the finance, you know, financials in place, blah, 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 as you do with business, set up the team. And, and as of, um, as of a, a month ago, I actually put a general manager in, in to actually run that whole enterprise after three well, not even three years. And so he's actually running, uh, running the whole, you know, running the team. I'm still involved to a certain extent, but by the end of this year, the goal is that I'll have a one hour meeting with him once a week to run that business. Love that's it. How, that's, that's how I think though. though. I assist, that's I'm a system. Beautiful leverage. Yes. Yeah. And it is all about repeatable systems and processes that you can do. So let's take a step back before you were able to leverage this. And as you were getting up on stage and really doing your keynotes and selling the whole thing, you actually, I don't know if you did it on purpose or not, but you kind of created a cult, a cult like following because you had such a fabulous idea. No, we're not going to go drink Kool-Aid and go, you know, someplace later on. But, you know, it's there we like... are. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I... Jim Jones no, and the it Kool-Aid. Been... It's been my whole mission, guys. It's been my whole mission to have a cult. I want to have a cult. I don't. I, no, sarc... but you hashtag, did. You had sarcasm. But, uh, you yeah, know, no, which is oh... beautiful. Yeah, look, oh, let, let's let's switch cult for tribe. Let's go with that. Right. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. Um, Much better. But, yeah, positive, like, like, positive, positive words instead of negative yeah, the whole, connotations with a cult. I mean, the whole induction process gets a little weird, but we won't go into it. <laughs> um, the, but the point, the point is, it, what, what, and I've been very, very, and I'm glad we're having this conversation because I actually don't get a chance to actually explain a lot of this stuff. But I've been really deliberate on, on. Um, you know, like I, I actually coach a lot of other thought leaders, you know, people who want to be speakers or authors and people who want to kind of do what I do and then get their own brand uh, out there in the world. You know, like like I could have gone out there as Trav Bell and everyone would have went, oh, yeah, yawn, who cares? Um, <laughs> because pre-internet, you know, pre-Facebook, pre-social media, the likes of Brian Tracy, the likes of Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Jack Canfield, these sort of people in my space, which is personal development, um, and you you know this, Les Brown, et cetera, et cetera. These are people that I've followed. Um, they were they were kind of famous before the internet, so they've got a catalogue, a library of of you know um, stuff, and mm -hmm. so they they had this. So how 
and then they go on social media, like with every other coach, and especially over the last six months, everyone's gone online. So how the hell do you stand out from the noise? Mm-hmm. How do you get noticed? How do you get attention? And if, and if you think that it's not about getting attention, you're absolutely bullshitting yourself. You've got to get attention somehow, hopefully mm-hmm. good attention and not bad attention. But I, I thought I was deliberate about calling myself the, and my lead in was the bucket list guy. And I used to, when I turned 40, I had a mohawk and all that sort of thing, but now I'm known <laughs> as the bucket list guy. And that was a hell of a lot more interesting than Trav Bell. And you probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have even had me on your podcast if it wasn't called the bucket list guy. If you're like, Trav Bell is going to be on there. He does something with bucket lists. I don't know. But the bucket list <laughs> guy, and I went next level and went, all right, I'm going to call myself, and spoiler alert, I'm known as the world's number one bucket list expert, as you said in the intro. Yeah. I made that up. <gasps> no. So, so the deal is, like, I went, oh, yeah, the bucket list guy. And then I went on, on Google machine and, and then went, oh, who's like the Mac Daddy? Who's like the expert? Who's like the king of bucket? Oh, look, no one. Stuff it. I'm now the world's number one bucket list expert. And I put on a, put on a website and people are going, oh, they ring yeah. up from media. And Someone said. Spread on, spread on bucket lists or something. And I, I got this call years ago. Oh, we've... Washington some magazine or something and they said um, oh we're doing this big spread on bucket lists and we've interviewed all these other people we really want yours because you're the world's number one bucket list expert I'm like mm-hmm, yep I'm pr- pretty damn important so uh, you know, so I'm really busy I wasn't um, so the point being that I've stayed in that lane for 10 years which is really hard to do as a, as a serial entrepreneur right right and because we get tempted by all these other bright shiny objects in different yeah. ways in which to do thing. but but yeah so thank god i've done that but but then leveraging it out to affect the lives of more people is really what we've done with bucket list coach so um yeah i, I don't know if that answered your original question but um it did in a oh. unique way um, is that you created it and you became, tribe. you, tribe. you tribe. created the tribe, you created yeah. the tribe by naming it, claiming yeah. it and owning it and then going out and telling everybody else, Hey, look at me. I'm the number one guy. And this is how it is. And I think That's when to you're strengthen the brand yeah. by, by building it, I, I believe every speaker, every coach, every thought leader should also really put some consideration into into um, how to develop a tribe. And by tribe, the old school way of describing tribe is advocates, is fans and followers and this sort of thing. And I think in this day and age, it, you know, people want a sense of community. They want to belong to something. Mm-hmm. So tribe, you know, tribe, which is brand values, which is um, a sense of inclusiveness. And I, and I think, You know, we find ourselves, and I've given lots of talks around how to build a tribe around your business as well. No matter what business, you can build a tribe and they become your fans and followers and you can on-sell and you create memberships and all that sort of thing. But branding the tribe, having that unique brand language has also got to be a leader. It's basically, when I set it up, I actually looked at how to, I Googled how to build a cult. I did. See, you were changing my word. And you had already dug down that hole. <laughs> I've gone down that hole. And then I ended up on, you know, watching Eyes Wide Shut. And uh, with, you know, and I'm like, hang on, this is, uh, what we've got is, but it's the same philosophy, the same thing there's people that they use for religions, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, not as full on. Um, the thing is branding that gives people a sense of community. Um, and I think in the craziness of the world, people need a sense of belonging. So why not create, you know, that platform, that community? Um, and we've gone hashtag bucket listers. That's our graduates. We've mm-hmm. got our ticket before you kick it. If you can see that hashtag I love ticket it. before love you kick it. it. So yes. we, if you put that into social media, hashtag ticket before you kick it, you'll see our tribe. Um, of coaches and clients from around the world ticking stuff off their bucket list. And they, you know, it's, it's, uh, a, it's an achievement goal out there designed to disrupt social media and get attention. And um, so a lot of this has been strategic. And I think it's really, really important these days. 
I think it's in essential and it's missing on so many business owners plates. And because they're focusing on the end role of how do I get more clients and spend more mm. time so I could have more freedom, which is this vicious whirlwind thing going down that they get sucked into and then they hate their life. And if they just had yeah. a couple of really juicy goals that were personal and professional, but like mm. juicy things they're striving for, wouldn't that make your month a whole lot better when you get closer to that event and drive that thing? I mean, it's like, I love it. I totally yeah. dig it. The, the thing is too, it's called the Facebook effect as well. When, the, when you build a decent tribe around your business um, and you, 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 I guess, uh, you know, bring them all into say a Facebook group or, or whatever it might be. Um, the Facebook effect is when the group starts helping each other. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and mm -hmm. they become an advisor and not too much because you create some rules, but they become a, they become an encourager. They become an accountability partner. They a become supporter. a supporter. And so that, that system becomes its own organism, so to speak. Um, and uh, you know, like for instance, my new training manager that I've just appointed up in Canada, um, she's just a, you know, she's just a powerhouse. She runs all these different programs and, and out, outperforms everyone else. And, um, and everyone was kind of going to her anyway for like, how are you doing this? And being such a nice lady, she's like, oh, just sharing away. And I said, look, you're giving advice. Like, hey, let's talk about you taking over what I do, you know, as a training manager, let's work out a fee and let's look, look at a, a position description. Now she's our training manager. And it's complete, like what, 10, 15 hours of what I was personally doing right off the table, literally in the last month. Like she's doing it all and doing a way better job as well. So, so if you, you know, creation of tribe first and then see what rises to the surface and you might then cherry pick the ones that you, could really that you could really leverage through. I love it. I love it. This is this is really good stuff. And it is it is the point that businesses want to scale, whether you create a tribe, which you should, or you're creating a business, you still need to scale. You can't be the one and done or a couple of little, you know, a chief and a couple of engines to no. to make a scalable business. It's got to be, like you said, with the systems and processes. But I love the idea of the brand and the tribe and really getting it out there as, as a cause almost, you know, that you're going yeah. and you're moving and, and now it becomes the weight of the whole group that's pushing you forward. And yeah, that yeah. is the perfect description of leverage, barring the, the, the banking explanation. I mean, you've just described how to totally leverage the world and take it's, your business and you're how many hours are you working a week now? Oh, too many, but, uh, oh. but the thing is, I'm, I'm you were supposed to say thing. five or six, come on. Oh yeah, you yeah, know, I, I've got a book coming out called the three hour work week. You know, I'm sure oh, it'll really? go well. <laughs> no, Tim Ferriss did the four hour work week. I'm going to try and undercut him. You didn't beat um, him up. No, no, but, it, but it, no, it's not about leveraging back. You know, I, I, I don't think it's about scaling back because as entrepreneurs, um, what are we going to do with all this spare time? We'll just create more, more mess. We'll go out and say yes to other opportunities. And this is, this it's, but, but the important thing is, is to, for people to realize for entrepreneurs, for founders, for, for leaders within their businesses, We're and even if you're pets. wearing every single hat, right. Is to or like, like just think about, really think about your sweet spot. I know what my sweet spot is. I've seen me involved in every part of the business and doing all of those shit and, and doing these one or two things way better. So, okay, dickhead, um, get on with the things that you actually enjoy doing that have a higher value per hour rate and pay someone else to do all the shittier stuff that you're no good at. Yeah. And so, or you're, all, you're okay at, you, you know enough, you're much, you're enough of a generalist to handball the stuff and, and make that person accountable. It's not like, oh, I, I've got no idea about my accounts. So there you go. You work it out. No, I would advise that you organize, you do your reconciliations, you do your end of years, you do your, you know, everything. That, 
and then you can confidently give that to someone else. Give it to a VA. You know, our businesses now we 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 hire people on a project by project basis. We don't have to. We live in a world of remote work teams, so we yes. can have a whole bunch of different people working for us for in different time zones around the world, which is absolutely awesome. My accounts manager, she's in the Philippines, and I won't tell you what I pay her, but it's hell of a lot less than than what it. And she's just a full and and she's like, a, um, she's got an MBA. Yeah, you know, it's like next level next level accounting you know and for for hardly any money it's amazing but it, you, there's a lot of trust that the entrepreneur has to um let go of you know in terms of delegation yeah. i'm not going to say i'm the world's best at that by any stretch but you've got to trust That's other the, people you've got to yeah. give them a framework a sandbox to uh to do their best work in but you've got to go you know it's not about going all right you do that now and i'm going to go sit back on the hammock um and just count the money you go and you go and do your best work so no one in my company can speak like i can speak no one in my company can do things like this no one in my company can write or do blog posts or do you know live videos and all that sort of thing so someone's got to go do that and drive and, and drive it but the rest um go systemize you know and i've got there's a big difference between a, i believe a leader and a manager as well so I've got a great manager, you know, a great general manager who's an amazing box ticker. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not. And you're the, and you're the you're the visionary. You're the creator. You're the like you said. You're the best on the on the soapbox to talk about your 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 program because you are the guy, right? And then oh, you yeah. get all the minions to do to do the work that's needed to done, be done. I think the really yeah. important thing that you said that is surprising. Because that's this is the difference between an a, a, a business owner or an employee versus the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is mm. always going to be striving for something more, and mm. and I think that's that's the real true advantage of what mm. we passionately believe in. Because, you know, I'm going to keep trying it, and and if I can put my energy and focus into a certain direction it's going to pull the whole train along. So I think it's a, I think yeah, it's a necessary yeah. and part. It's, and then this is really fresh for me too, because I, I've, I, you know, I, I've kind of got two businesses. One is my speaking, you know, bucket list guy business. And then there's bucket list coach. And it was always my goal to get bucket list coach up to a point where um, the team manages, manages that business. And me, I, I've had to, I've had to like leverage out to to be the leader of it obviously but also be and this is might be a new word for some of the business owners out there who've got a few employees you got to leverage to ambassador role oh all right so Ooh. go to that ambassador role where you're the spokesperson you're the pinup yeah. boy or girl you're that you're that person who drives the big joint venture deals the big partnerships comes up with the crazy ideas and then puts it into a 90 day plan for someone else to run. And then, uh, and then at the end of the day, but someone's got to drive that vision. And the thing is, I've, I've only really realized that that is such a more, that's, that, that is a needed position within, and you cannot do that if your your fingers are in all all the different pies or all the different if, departments yep. divisions if you're lift, your if you're lifting the if you're lifting the the bag of sand you can't be the visionary up on top so and no. and i think that's truly where us entrepreneurs feel our most passion and the most drive and that's really our most genius is being up there if if we get to a point where we've got to be the wheel cranker then we're not an entrepreneur, we're a business owner. Yeah, I think there's a big difference. Um, I, I, and, and what I'm describing and, and, and what I've done is not for everyone. I don't think it Correct. is for everyone. There's some people that go into business for themselves just to make their own rules so they can, they can contract themselves out however they need to, you know, like a tradie or a contractor can, mm -hmm. can do that. And, and they know that their price per hour is this and they're happy with that. And that's cool. That you know, everyone's got their own, their own game plan. Um, that's just not me, and so I, I like, I like to, you know, my my venture plan is to have other investments going, and I'd love to be a, a venture capitalist for 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 businesses and startups and 
take an interest in in other kinds of businesses um, in, in due course. But you know, first things first is to get my own um, yeah, my own stuff going. under yeah under wraps, and then and then once it's all systemized, then then just chuck money into it, and then you know that that yeah. ROI is going to be guaranteed. You know, put in 10 grand, I know that that's going to produce this. Put in 20, that's going to produce this. So that's what that's what that machine is uh, is all about. Hmm. This has been great, Trav. I'm so excited. Uh, you you get the excitement going. I'm always excited. So now we're just going like crazy. <laughs> but where can listeners find out more about you and the bucket list team and the bucket list coaching and just all, all bucket list guy stuff? Yeah, look, um, uh, they can go to my website, the buck, thebucketlistguy.com, or if they're interested in becoming a coach, um, bucketlistcoach.com. We run weekly webinars, uh, you know, and people can check it out. And uh, whether it's, you know, there might be some, you know, people that want to do that as a side hustle. There's life coaches, there's business coaches, there's people who have been through all sorts and come out the other end and want to help people lead more fulfilled lives. We're, we're we're on a big mission to rebrand life coaching to make it cool. Nice. You know, and, because and like it's, cross, it's not really yeah. cool right now. <laughs> no, it's intangible. I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm a, I'm a coach to life coaches and I still don't get, call myself a life coach because I'm like, yeah. Oh Jesus. You know, right. it's just, it's you a know, weird some, name of, of something that is like you said, intangible. So when yeah, you can put yeah. something tangible in front of that or the action pieces that you can have are totally tangible and you can see and it's it's meaty, you know? Yeah. Then yeah, then yeah. you're not a you're not a quote coach anymore. <laughs> no, no. And we've done that too, because life coaching is very wishy washy, intangible, uh, skeptical. It's met with skepticism. And um, but the certified bucket list coach is a lot more tangible and we've got proof that you know from we do uh, programs from families to fortune 500 companies we only do group coaching too so um you know that because we want to affect the lives of a lot of people and right. and shit the world needs that right now so yeah bucketlistcoach.com or uh check me out on uh, probably instagram is where i go to most these days which is uh bucketlistguy.travbell cool thank you so much for being on profit with a plan this has been a real treat for us i know our listeners have uh found an idea or 25 that they can put into their lives and into their business to make them more profitable. So, you know, business owners, I want to encourage you to make sure that, you know, business has been really hard this year. I want to make sure that you can not only survive and thrive. So I encourage you to go check out my six tips to help you survive and thrive. And if you go to failproofbiz, that's biz.com, uh, you'll be able to get my special report there. And then I hope that that will help you. And then reach out to Trav because Trav is awesome and his insights are totally awesome. So as always, we would love to hear your questions, ideas for future shows, feedback. I'm sure Trav will be looking on, uh, on the links as well to answer your questions. Please subscribe and comment on, on the links for the shows. And as always, you can catch Profit With A Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. And so until then, uh, make your plans and profit with them. Thanks, Trav. Bye, guys.